Before we discuss the processes of mitosis and meiosis, let's actually define and discuss what a chromosome is. But before we examine the chromosome, let's recall what a DNA molecule is and what it's used for. So DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, is a type of biological molecule that is used by the cell to store the genetic information of that cell. Now the DNA contains a double helix structure, and what that basically means is two anti-parallel single strands of DNA join together and form our helical structure known as the double helix, which looks something like this. Now, if we take a single double helix DNA molecule found in the human body and we extend it over a straight line in a linear fashion, on average, our DNA molecule will have a length that is slightly over 1.5 meters in length, which is equivalent to being over 5 feet in length. Now the question is, how exactly does the cell accomplish this? How exactly does the cell actually take such a long biological molecule and place it into a very small region known as the nucleus of the cell? In fact, the human cell is capable of fitting 46 of these individual DNA molecules into a single nucleus. How exactly does the cell accomplish this feat? Well, basically what the cell does is it uses special proteins, as we'll see in just a moment, to basically condense and coil our DNA into a very, very dense structure known as the chromosome. Now the chromosome consists predominantly of protein and the rest is DNA, and a very small portion of the chromosome consists of RNA molecules. So, let's actually take a look at the following diagram that basically describes the process by which the cell condenses our DNA into chromosomes. Now, as we go down along the following diagram, we're basically zooming out. So as we're going along the DNA, we're zooming out and so the DNA is getting smaller and smaller. So let's begin with the top where we zoom in onto the actual double helix. So as we're going along the following double helix, we're basically moving away and away and so the double helix is becoming smaller and smaller and we stop at the point where our DNA looks like a single line. So basically at this point, what the cell basically does is it uses special types of proteins known as histones and it wraps the double helix, the DNA, around our histone. So this is our histone shown in brown and this is our DNA being wrapped around that histone. So next, what the cell does is it takes eight of these histones, which each hist where each histone contains the DNA called around it, and it groups our eight histones into a single structure known as the nucleosome. And the nucleosome is described in the following section of the diagram. Now, basically, as we basically move away, the nucleosome gets smaller and smaller. So each one of these structures are, uh, is our nucleosome. Now, what happens next is these nucleosomes then wrap around in a helical fashion to form a coil that we know as the solenoid. So basically, we take these individual nucleosomes and we pack them, to, uh, and we pack them together in a helical fashion to form our coils known as the solenoid and basically that continues and we take those solenoid and we basically coil them even further to form super coils shown in the following diagram. So each one of these single solenoid basically coils even further. And when we take the super coils and we basically stack them on top of one another, we form a single fiber as shown in the following diagram known as the chromatin fiber or simply our chromatin. 
So the nucleosomes wrap around in a helical fashion to form a coil known as the solenoid and the coil then wraps even further to form our supercoils and these supercoils then basically condense and they form the chromatin fiber. Now chromatin also contains a very small portion of RNA. So a very small portion of the chromatin consists of RNA molecules such as RNA polymerase that is involved in DNA transcription or RNA transcription as we'll see in just a moment. Now, this is not all. Basically, these chromatin fibers will coil even further to form the following helical fashion and those coils will coil even further to form the final condensed structure known as the chromosome. So this individual unit here is known as the chromosome. So the chromosome is nothing more than a very, very condensed version of the DNA molecules where the chromosome predominantly consists of proteins because those proteins are used to condense that DNA molecule. So the chromatin fiber condenses even further into a structure called our chromosome. Now every single somatic cell in the human body consists of 23 pairs of chromosomes where each one of the chromosomes in a pair comes from each one of the parents. So basically in the following diagram this is only one of the 23 pairs in our, in our human cell. So basically this chromosome let's say comes from the male parent and this second chromosome comes from the female parent and we basically join these two chromosomes at the center at a location known as the centromere and the centromere uses special types of proteins to basically link or join our two chromosomes together. So this is one chromosome that comes from one parent, the second chromosome that comes from a second parent, and this is the centromere that contains proteins shown in red that basically join our two chromosomes together. So this is a single chromosome pair. And because we have 23 of such chromosome pairs, that means we have a total of 23 times 2 or 46 individual individual chromosomes, so we have 46 individual DNA molecules. So once again, a region called the centromere connects the two chromosomes in a single chromosome pair, and it uses special types of proteins to assist in that joining process. Now, the individual chromosomes in any given pair are said to be homologous with respect to one another because they basically contain genes that code for similar traits such as hair color and eye color. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if we examine the following pair, we have one chromosome and a second chromosome. And both of these chromosomes contain similar genes that basically code for the same exact traits such as eye color as well as hair color and many other traits. Now, somatic cells are said to be diploid or diploid because they contain these homologous pairs. So if we look at the following diagram, this diagram as well as this diagram here basically describes a diploid cell. So a diploid cell is a, ce is a cell that contains our homologous pairs of chromosomes. Now a haploid cell is basically a cell that does not contain the homologous pairs. It only contains one of the chromosomes that comes from each one of the homologous pairs. So a diploid cell contains four homologous pairs of chromosomes and the haploid contains four of these individual chromosomes and not those chromosomal homo homologous pairs. So one example of a haploid cell are germ cells also known as gametes and we'll see what gametes or haploid cells actually are when we discuss the process of uh, meiosis and mitosis, specifically the process of meiosis. 
Now, the last concept, the last idea that I'd like to discuss briefly is how exactly do we use the chromosomes in the process of transcription? So remember, transcription is the process by, we, by which we take our DNA molecule and we transcribe it into the mRNA molecule or RNA molecule and then those RNA molecules are used to synthesize the proteins that the genes on the DNA actually code for. So the DNA in chromosomes is too packed and too densely coiled to actually undergo the process of transcription. In order for the RNA polymerase to actually transcribe the DNA, the genes in the DNA into our RNA, what happens is the chromosome must actually uncoil. So we see that once the chromosome uncoils into special types of chromatin fibers known as euchromatin, only then can our RNA polymerase actually bind to our DNA and transcribe and form the proper RNA molecule that can be used in protein synthesis. In fact, over 90% of the chromosome exists in the euchromatin form. Only a small portion of the chromosome actually exists in the very dense version known as the chromosome. However, during the process of my, uh, meiosis, when we basically reproduce, our chromosome condenses entirely into the chromosome as we described it in the following diagram. And we'll discuss more of that when we discuss the process of meiosis.